I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. I'm dragging out the bits and pieces projects. I've got a spoke shave that's got to be worked on, another spoke shave that's got to be worked on, a saw set that's got to be worked on, and this valve grinding tool that's got to be worked on. All of them need a little time to sit and mellow out. I'm going to put some penetrating oil on them and I'll show you how I go about doing that. When I went down to the Grand Antique Gallery, I picked up this number 151 spoke shave. It's pretty rusty. The screws are stuck. And I don't want to damage anything before I get a chance to actually work on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out my favorite can of croil. And I'm going to put some croil on the threads. Had this stuff for a long time, as you can see by the look of the can. Uh, say I bought it in 1999, so it's 18 years old. And I'm getting to the point where I'm running out of it. I've got maybe, oh, I don't know, another 25 projects worth of this stuff. It doesn't take much. The thing I finally figured out was, you only put in a squirt can what you intend to use because it's called the oil that creeps it crawls right out of the can it actually runs down the sides of the thing uh, don't know what the volatiles are in it but it definitely will evaporate so I put enough on for the job that I've got at hand and that's putting some oil on the screws here now it is very lightweight oil and a pump can works well, but you got to be careful and not just pull on the trigger like a madman because it's going to dump stuff all over the place. Now, it doesn't smell bad, so it's not like it's a horrific thing if it gets on you, but you really want it on the part that you want it to work on. You don't need to have it on your shirt. Now the main trick with this stuff is you tap it. I don't mean whale on it, you tap it. This little ball peen hammer is about 10 times bigger than what I really need. All the little bits and pieces and parts, just tapping on it. Seems to shock the system enough, helps the oil drive in. I don't know why. It works. Don't knock something if it works. Now I've got, I don't know, one, two, three, four, I think there's a couple more down there in the drawer of these spoke shapes. I don't really use them much. I don't do a lot of woodworking. I, I fix tools and I like making tools, but I don't do a lot of woodworking. Now, while I've got the oil out, I also have this number 42 Stanley saw set that's gotten abused. And a little bit of oil on this will go a long ways towards the reconstruction that it so richly deserves. Now, number 42 Stanleys are considered to be the best saw set by a lot of people. Blisters my finger. Now, I don't know if it's the way I'm doing it, the way I'm holding it, maybe my fingers are shaped wrong, I don't know. But I get a blister on my little finger just from using it. Let's see. This is an upcoming project and everything can always use a little bit of help. This 
This has screws on it. We'll give it a little coil. See why I don't like bailing wire? They lost one of the screws. Didn't have a screw. Went and got the bailing wire and lashed the thing together with bailing wire. Now on their defense, it does work. This is a thing for uh, grinding valves on a car. Lawnmower, motorcycle, engine, whatever. You put a little grinding compound between the seat and the valve stick this in a slot in the top of the valve sometimes they have two holes sometimes they have a slot sometimes they don't have anything and you have to use a rubber cup but then when you crank this the end rotates back and forth not around and around back and forth and the cool thing is it doesn't land in the same spot it goes back and forth, but it always advances a little bit more than it backs up. That way the valve spins around in the seat, but it does a scrubbing action as it does it. The grinding compound goes in and actually seats the valve in. Now when I was a kid, I wanted to fix a, a one and a half horse cast iron Briggs and Stratton engine that I had, and I wanted to seat the valves. And I was a kid. I didn't really know what I was doing. I was like 13. So I ground the valves until the point where they were completely seated into the head of the engine. They worked, but not very long. I had made 100% contact. There wasn't any place for that valve to go. Once it wore a little bit, it actually hooked into the hole and stopped sealing. I blew the engine up long before that happened, but that's what you do if you run the valve grinder too long. You just want to put a little white line, a little uh, frosted line on the valve from where the grinding compound just cuts a little groove into the valve itself and makes the two surfaces mate together. The valve's a little harder than the cast iron seat, so the valve shouldn't wear away a whole lot and the valve seat should wear away a little bit. There's actually reamers and all kinds of things that do that. Uh, but I was a kid. I was 13. And I didn't have a machine like that. I had a, a little suction cup on a wooden dowel. And I was supposed to just roll it back and forth in my hands. I had more patience than I had anything else. I obviously didn't have any experience doing valve grinding. But I certainly had the patience to continue grinding on that valve. When my neighbor came over to find out how far along I was, he realized that I had ground it way too far. We ended up cutting almost a 32nd of an inch off the end of that valve just to get it to go down a seat. But it worked. And I had fun riding on the go-kart or the mini bike or whatever we put that thing on. It's been so long ago I've forgotten. Your kids will do almost anything to get a ride on something with an engine. Put them to work doing something and watch what they're doing and tell them how to go about it. A little bit of instruction in that would have helped. But nobody thought I had enough patience to sit there and rub that hard. Well, that's a story from my youth. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments below. You know, I read them all. If you'd like to continue watching videos here at Old Sneelock's Workshop, you can click over here and that'll take you to the last video that I posted. Or you can click over here and go to a YouTube video chosen especially for you. You can subscribe to Old Sneelock's Workshop by clicking here on the sign. And please, give us a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.